solve x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Okay. This will be our first example. I am going to solve this one by factoring. Okay. So first of all, what does it mean to factor? Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to begin with this example. We're going to solve x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to solve it by factoring, okay? So we will solve by factoring. Okay. What does that mean? Right? Okay, that's an excellent question. So, before we actually factor this quadratic, or any quadratic for that matter, I'm going to go back to numbers, okay, for a moment. And I'm going to imagine, okay, I know that, for example, if I take the number 48, I can write a factor tree for 48, and it goes something like this. I ask myself what numbers multiply give me 48. I can get 2 times 24. 24, I can get 2 times... Uh, 12. 12 I can get 2 times 6. 6 I can get 2 times 3 and that's it. 2, these, this 2, this 2, this 2, this 2 and this 3 when you multiply them you get the number 48. These numbers the 2, the 2, the 2, the 2, the 3 are factors of 48. Now uh, broadly speaking 24 is also a factor of 48, 12 is also a factor of 48 and so on. The 2, the 2, the 2, the 2, and the 3 are known as prime factors because they cannot be further broken. Um, but so what this allows us to do is it allows us to write 48 as, in this case, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or alternatively, if we want to use the exponential notation, since there are four 2's being multiplied together, I can write that as 2 to the 4th times 3. Okay. And so in a similar fashion, um, what I want to do with this quadratic is I want to find what are called linear factors that will multiply to give me this quadratic. So in other words, what I want and what we mean by factoring is to find two factors. Let's call them x plus a and x plus b such that x plus a times x plus b is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8. Okay? Okay. That's great. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to address this problem. So let's suppose hypothetically that such a factorization existed. Okay, what if what if there were numbers that would make this true? Right? So what I can do is I can say, okay, that's great. X plus A for some number I don't know, and X plus B for some number I don't know. Right? I don't know A and B. Well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute here. So I'm going to say that, um, let me see here, so x times x is x squared, x times b is plus bx, a times x is plus ax, and then a times b is uh, plus ab. Okay, so what I just did there is called, uh, well some people call it the FOIL method we can call it the, we can just see that it's a consequence of distribution. But in any case, we're able to take these two, um, what we're going to call linear factors, because they're 
uh, they have x to the power 1 um, and we're multiplying it to get some quadratic. Now if you notice here the bx and the ax when I add them I can see that this gives me x squared plus a plus b times x plus a b. I pulled out the x out of the bx plus ax uh, so that it would be just one term of x and the ab comes and the ab is by itself. And also here I wrote a plus b just so that it would um, just so that the they would be in order but here because it's plus um, because it's addition I can commute the terms okay okay but here's what's happening now I want you to catch on to something that I'm doing here which is extremely amazing or not that it's amazing um, but like what I'm about to tell you is um, how this factors um, and how to factor more generally so if you notice here I don't know anything about a and b I don't know anything about x plus a or x plus b but what I want to do what I wanted to do was I wanted to say let's suppose that such factors existed if I multiplied them I would get this expression that x squared plus a plus b x plus a b would be the quadratic that these two factors multiply to give me but I was originally trying to say okay I want to factor this one well aha if there was some way if there was some way that a plus b could equal positive 6 and if there was some way a b could equal 8 then I would be in business I would have a factorization for this number I mean for this uh, polynomial and indeed look at this if I let if I let uh, if I if I look at the factors of 8 okay 8 times 1 a times 1 is 8 so that would be satisfied right if a if a was 1 or and b was 8 but then 8 plus 1 would be 9 that's not satisfied right but look at this how else can I get 8 4 times 2 aha 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 plus 2 is 6 aha if I let this be x plus 4 times x plus 2 then basically I will have x times x which is x squared I will have x times 2 which is plus 2x I will have 4 times x which is plus 4x and I will have 4 times 2 which is plus 8 and then when I combine these two like terms I get x squared plus 6x plus 8 aha I have factored it okay and so now we know that this equation that I wanted to solve can be rewritten as x plus 4 times x plus 2 is equal to 0 okay and so you can see that just as this number 48 can be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 this polynomial can be rewritten as x plus 4 times x plus 2 now there is a theorem of the real numbers and it says that if we have two numbers and they're being multiplied to give zero then either one of the numbers is zero the other number is zero or they're both zero so here to solve this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to exploit that property and I'm going to say okay either x plus 4 is zero or x plus 2 is zero okay so if x plus 4 is zero minus 4 minus 4 and I get x equals negative 4. If x plus 2 is 0, negative minus 2, minus 2, and I get x equals to negative 2. In this case, with this equation, I have found through factoring the following two solutions to this equation x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. Now, just to be completely sure that we've gotten the right answers, I'm going to plug these in okay what do I mean by that well I'm gonna see if they make this equation true so let me start off with testing x equals negative 4 so if I take negative 4 okay negative 4 squared plus 6 times negative 4 plus 8 this is gonna equal well negative 4 
times negative 4 is positive 16. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. I'm adding that negative so it becomes minus 24 and then I do plus 8. Now 16 minus 24 becomes negative 8 plus 8 becomes 0. So we have just verified that this number x equals negative 4 is indeed a solution. Now let us test x equals negative 2. Okay. So as before I'm going to plug it into the equation. Now strictly speaking I'm just doing this this one time for this problem so we can verify that these are in fact solutions. Um, but for the further for the future examples, I'm not going to do it unless the equation has some special uh, property that we want to look at. Okay, but you can always test it like this. So, for example, here the negative two. When I square it, it becomes negative two times negative two, which becomes positive four. Okay, here I have six times negative two, which is negative twelve. I'm adding the negative twelve, so that becomes minus twelve, and then finally plus eight. S similar to before. 4 minus 12 is negative 8, plus 8 is 0. So I have just shown to you that this procedure does in fact give us the, the solutions to this equation. Now, I will also say, uh, although we're not going to prove it, that if you have a equation whose greatest power of x is uh, 2, the maximum number of distinct roots it can have is 2, okay? Um, and uh, let me see. And of course, in general, if the largest power of the polynomial of interest to us, it, let's say an expression like this, but with greater powers, if the greatest power is n, then the maximum number of distinct roots that such an equation have, can have is n, okay? Now, I want to go back a little bit here before I before I end this video because it's our first example of factoring and I want to show you something amazing. Here, what I did was I imagined, I hoped, I wished that there were two numbers, A and B, such that I could write these two factors, multiply them, and get the equation that we started out with because those would be uh, that those would be the factors of this polynomial. We could rewrite this polynomial like that. I verified here that these two factors gave us this um, polynomial. So indeed, this polynomial can be written that way. I showed that here in this calculation, right? But what I also showed in this procedure is that I didn't assume anything about A and B, but by multiplying them out, I realized that there were restrictions on what A and B could be that allowed us to find what a and b were. That is to say, when you multiply these out, you see that the middle term, in this case the, the 6 uh, in the 6x, must be the sum of the two numbers a and b. And moreover, this number here, the constant term of the quadratic, the 8, has to be the product of the two numbers a and b. And so therefore, in the future, when we do another factoring example, I'm not going to do this whole procedure. I'm going to immediately ask, what are the factors of the constant term? Uh, those factors will be my a's and my b's, and then I will see which of those add up to give me the number in the middle. And then that will give us the numbers that I need to factor the polynomial. And um, And that's our first initial discussion of factoring. Thank you.